مناورة محمد رسول الله للجيش الإيراني تتواصل في يومه الرابع حيث شهدت في هذه المرحلة عمليات زرع الألغام الدفاعية في بحر عمان ومنطقة المناورات من قبل السفن الحربية والزوارق السريعة والغواصة الثقيلة من فئة طارق وبعدها قامت القوة البحرية بكسح الألغام بواسطة كاسحات تسحبها مروحيات لفتح خطوط المواصلات وتوفير الأمن للسفن التجارية وحاملات النفط واستخدم الجيش الإيراني في هذه العمليات منظومة حديثة ومحلية الصنع لكسح الألغام عملية إزالة الألغام تتم عبر منظومة جديدة تربط بالمروحيات وتعمل على كشف وتفجير الألغام البحرية عبر إيجاد الأمواج الإلكترومغناطيسية والصوتية كما تعمل على إزالة الألغام في الشاطئ والبحر ويمكن استخدام هذه التقنية في فترة الحرب والسلام كما شهدت المناورات قصف الطائرات الحربية أهدافا بحرية متحركة بصاروخ مافريك المعدل محليا وتم تحديث الصاروخ وهو من فئة جو بحر برفع مداه وتعزيز دقته وتزويده بكاميرات مراقبة ويتمتع صاروخ مافريك بقدرة الاستخدام في الأحوال الجوية السيئة وهو فعال في إصابة الأهداف الكبيرة والبعيدة نسبيا الدفاع الجوي الإيراني أيضا نفذ بنجاح عمليات الإشراف والمراقبة والسيطرة لتحليق الطائرات والمروحيات في إطار مهمة نقل القوات والمعدات وتسيير الدوريات البحرية للحؤول دون مواجهة مع طائرات العدو وإيجاد مسار تحليق آمن وخلال إجراء اليوم الرابع من المناورات كشف قائد القوة البحرية في الجيش الإيراني الأدميرال حبيب الله سياري عن إجبار مدمرة أمريكية على مغادرة منطقة المناورات وتظهر الصور أن المدمرة تلقت تحذيرات من طائرة استطلاع إيرانية حين دخولها منطقة تقع في مرمى الصواريخ الإيرانية وقال مسؤول عسكري إن القطاعات الأمريكية غادرت المكان فور تلقيها للتحذيرات Scale back and streamline, but maintain security. The president and the Pentagon outlined the reshaping of the U.S. military and its focus. And as the U.S. presence in Afghanistan has begun winding down. Yes, the tide of war is receding. But the question that this strategy answers is what kind of military will we need long after the wars of the last decade are over? And today, uh, we're fortunate to be uh, moving forward from a position of strength. The Defense Strategy Review, outlined at the Pentagon, aims to refocus U.S. strategy toward an increased presence in the Pacific, with an eye toward China and its rapid military buildup. The review also marks a shift away from military budgets that exploded in the wake of 9-11. Congress enacted defense cuts last summer, amounting to more than $489 billion over the next 10 years. But the cuts will mean streamlining with the army dropping from 570,000, possibly to 490,000 soldiers over 10 years. The size of the Marine Corps is also expected to be reduced. He does not mean to repeat mistakes made after World War II and Vietnam by cutting too much. Our military will be leaner, but the world must know the United States is going to maintain our military superiority with armed forces that are agile, flexible and ready for the full range of contingencies and threats. That did not stop criticism of the new strategy from Republicans in Congress. The chair of the House Armed Services Committee, California Congressman Howard Buck McKeon, issued a statement calling it a lead from behind strategy for a left behind America. Себе такой полноценной региональной войной. И даже, никого не хочу пугать, с применением ядерного оружия. Об этом применением ядерного оружия. Об этом... The more unlawful assassination of Muammar Gaddafi 
The administration has done nothing but show a disgusting abuse of executive power and criminal disregard for domestic and international law, a disregard that nations like Russia and even high-level U.S. military officials view as threats to national sovereignty. Russia has repeatedly stated that that is the issue over military intervention in Syria and Iran. Sovereignty. That is the issue at stake with all the threats occurring at this point. And beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's what's at stake with the joint U.S.-NATO anti-ballistic missile system in Europe. And if his and others' warnings are not heeded, whether it's concerning Iran, Syria, or Russia directly, the United States will have violated the rights of a sovereign nation. The non-binding resolution HR 568 that overwhelmingly passed 401 to 11 effectively calls for a military attack on Iran when it obtains nuclear weapons capability. Has been ordered to prepare for war in a training directive issued. The order comes from the general staff headquarters which oversees the army. Forces should train to quote Fight and win battles, the directive said. The strong words are in striking contrast to previous ones. In particular, the use of the word Da Zheng, Chinese for fighting wars, has not been seen before. Japan was not mentioned in the directive, but this commentary in the People's Liberation Army Daily conjures up images of the Japanese invasion of China during World War II. It goes on to suggest Japan is gathering other East Asian countries to, quote, contain China. Some Chinese military officials have urged a quick strike to assert China's sovereignty over the contested Diaoyu or Senkaku Islands. This is the metaphor they use, kill a chicken to scare the monkeys. Now we have a Fox's alert for you now. Some new details that we're getting on our top story, unsettling news, massive budget cuts possibly coming to our armed forces. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel reportedly plans to shrink the army to its smallest force since before World War II. Our recommendations were guided by an updated defense strategy that builds on the President's 2012 defense strategic guidance. As described in the upcoming Quadrennial Defense Review Report, this defense strategy is focused on defending the homeland against all strategic threats, building security globally by projecting U.S. influence and deterring aggression and remaining prepared to win decisively against any adversary should deterrence fail. To fulfill this strategy, DOD will continue to shift its operational focus and forces to the Asia-Pacific, sustain commitments to key allies and partners in the Middle East and Europe, maintain engagement in other regions, and continue to aggressively pursue global terrorist networks. <coughs> Our reviews made two new realities very clear. First, the development and proliferation of more advanced military technologies by other nations that means that we are entering an era where American dominance on the seas, in the skies, and in space can no longer be taken for granted. Second, defense spending is not expected to reach the levels projected in the five-year budget plan submitted by the President last year. Given these realities, we must now adapt innovate and make difficult decisions to ensure that our military remains ready and capable, maintaining its technological edge over all potential adversaries. However, as a consequence of large budget cuts, our future force will assume additional risks in certain areas. In crafting this package, we prioritize DOD's strategic interests and match them to budget resources. <laughs> 